Well, we have no Prime Minister's Conference this year. We've normally had one almost every year. But as it was two years since I'd been here, I thought I'd rather like to come and check up on some of the things that have been happening. Nothing like first-hand information. Talks with the Prime Minister, to Lord, and so on. Among the things that have been happening, of course, Mr. Menzies, uh, are you satisfied that Australia is consulted enough by Whitehall as regards Western foreign policy as a whole? Oh, I think that by and large we were adequately consulted. There may be some occasion which might happen once in a blue moon, as you might say, uh, on which urgency makes full consultation. It's not very easy. But by and large, through the High Commissioner here, through your High Commissioner in Australia, by the cables, and by exchanges of personal visits. I think we're pretty well in the mind of the United Kingdom, and they in ours. But of course, every now and then it needs to be supplemented by a personal visit by the head of our government to the head of yours, because many things uh, miss out in a cable which come in in a private conversation. When you were in America recently, you said you were very much in favour of a summit meeting. Would you still favour a summit meeting even if there was complete deadlock at Geneva? Well, perhaps I could answer that best by saying that uh, you may, in one sense, have a deadlock at Geneva. Gromito may simply say, no, 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 nothing agreed to, with a background of threats. But I'm a great believer, under modern circumstances, with all that's happened in the world, I'm a great believer in this, that the free world loses nothing by going to a conference and speaking its mind. We have nothing to hide. There's nothing dishonest about our case. We have no territories to gain, no threats to make. And I think the effect of an honestly presented case that gets known around the world is tremendous, particularly in Southeast Asia, if I may say so where there are uncommitted nations. And if they read day after day that the representatives of the free world from Great Britain, from the United States and so on, are speaking their minds and are speaking like men and fairly, then I think the effect of that on the rest of the world is tremendously important, even though technically at the end of a week or a fortnight or three weeks, somebody says conference is adjourned Sine die, nothing happened. But you would still like to see a summit? Yes, I would indeed. How do you view the spread of communism in Southeast Asia at the present time? Well, I don't want to answer that by using any expression which would convey the idea that we're in a state of panic or undue fright about it. But of course, we are always apprehensive of the spread of communism, because it isn't as it is in Europe where you can define the boundary lines. The fact is that there are many communists in Malaya, there are many communists in Thailand, there are many communists, and perhaps a growing number, in Indonesia. And uh, with a mixture of races, the influence is more insidious, not so easy to detect. but we feel that there is always pressure on the communist side in all these countries. And of course it would be, from our point of view, a very, very unhappy state of affairs if they obtain control of our nearest neighbours, because these are our nearest neighbours in the world. There's no danger of communism in Australia itself at the present time. In the I would say way. not. They're, they're, they're a minority, they're very active, they full of uh, vigorous and evil intentions, but they're not a major factor. Would you say that as your country gets richer and stronger, as of course she is doing every year, her ties with this country will get weaker? Not for one moment. Oh, no. We, placed as we are, and you placed as you are, of course, both believe immensely in the closest association with the United States of America. That is elementary and it's natural and it, I think is very significant. But anything of that kind doesn't cut across 
our association with the United Kingdom for one moment. We are the Queen's men and women, and will continue to be so. Do you think that this is a sentimental tie or a practical one? Well, I think it's both. Both. Sentimental ties are not to be dismissed as not practical, because they very frequently are. Uh, why hasn't your campaign to get more British immigrants to go to Australia been more successful? Well, I think that it's been rather more successful than the question would suggest. We had more in the last 12 months than we had in the previous 12 months. But of course, the volume of migration out of a country, not only affected by the attractiveness of the receiving country, but also by the degree of contentment that people have in their own. And it may very well be that uh, things in Great Britain are in such good shape that people are not so keen on going. I don't know, but that's one of the factors. But on the whole, we have a pretty good percentage of British migrants. Would you say that uh, Australia was still a land of opportunity for those who wish to go there? Well, I was, of course, tremendous opportunity. And people don't need a great deal of capital to start? Well, I think the, the greatest capital that people need is a willingness to work and take a chance just as our grandparents did when they came to Australia. But you know, the attractiveness, it's worth mentioning that we have had invested into Australia on private account, not government borrowing, but on private account, something of the order of 100 million pounds a year for quite a long time now, six or seven years. And 60% of it probably, or 55% from Great Britain, and uh, the bulk of the remainder from the United States. So that our natural conceit about ourselves and our prosperity is apparently shared by pretty shrewd people outside. Mr. Menzies, you've been Prime Minister now longer than any other Australian ever has been. Uh, uh, it prompts the question as to whether you're considering at any time retiring. No, it has, the thought hasn't yet struck me. But every time I meet a pressman, for some odd reason, he suggests it to me. So far, I haven't thought of it. Uh, you would like you to go on in political life, are you? Because it has been rumoured since you've been here that you might possibly consider taking up some kind of diplomatic post if it was offered to you. I've had every kind of rumour in the world, reaching from the House of Lords to uh, some modest uh, travelling post. They're all rumours as far as I'm concerned. Mr. Mendes, as a cricketing enthusiast, I wonder if you've got any views as to why we did so badly in the tests. Oh, I think that's fairly simple. Batting wasn't good. Fielding was shocking. Bowling? Bowling first class. Are you going to watch any cricket while you're over here? Well, I'm hoping, if I'm allowed to, to uh, sneak a couple of hours at Lord. Thank you very much.